Emperor! Sup, nerds? Hey, yo, Imperial citizens, followers of Chaos, and those of you who have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about. Welcome to 40k in a few minutes. In this video, we'll be discussing the, probably, most well-known thing in the galaxy, which is Space Marines. We'll do some more in-depth facts and information regarding the members of the Adeptus Astartes, which, now that this intro is done, leads me to... We are the Emperor's Chosen. The Adeptus Astartes, otherwise known as Space Marines, are the transhuman augmented super soldiers of the Imperium of Man and are forged from the young aspirants, which are typically around ages 10 to 14, from the various Imperial worlds from the realms of Ultramar to the volcanic lands of Nocturne. The worlds of selection are quite wide and very per chapter. These young men are put through various tests and trials to determine if they are fit to be a Space Marine, and if they survive or pass, are then inducted as a neophyte and over time, are given the 19 gene seed organs that are critical to the formation of a space marine. And some organs are more useful than others. The second heart is a good example, which allows a space marine to survive mortal wounds due to higher circulatory ability, so they naturally just have more blood flow. On the other hand, the neuroglottis allows a space marine to track things by taste, so that's cool, I guess. Add that to the list of things that normal humans can't do. Neophytes are first put into the Scout Company, which is the 10th company of their chapter, and will eventually ascend the ranks to join the Support Company, and eventually Combat Companies, and in time, he may become a Chaplain, a Captain, or even a Chapter Master, if the Marine makes it that far. Space Marines are made to combat the worst horrors the galaxy has to offer, and there are a lot of them, and therefore are trained for as long as they may live, with average training requiring 20 hours per day, every day. With their signature bolters and multiple other forms of weaponry, an Astartes is a deadly, fine-crafted soldier ready to serve in any theater of the Imperium. A standard Astartes is capable of handling wounds that would kill or severely maim a normal human in multiple times over. And in some cases, like the Death Company, able to withstand wounds that would kill other Marines. When needed, Space Marines are usually deployed in groups called a company and will fight alongside regiments of the Astra Militarum or other forces of the Imperium. Space Marines are organized in a bit of a weird way, and those groups are called We are the Sons of Caliban. Due to the Codex Astartes, which is the big fancy space book written by the big blue father of the Ultramarines, Rabute Gilliman, Space Marines are divided up into groups of 1,000 Marines, which is called a chapter. Each chapter is usually comprised of 10 companies of 100 Marines, which is made up of 10 squads of 10 Marines. Usually companies 2 through 5 are battle companies and are the main fighting force of the Space Marines chapter. Companies 6 through 10 are support or reserve companies, with the 10th company specifically being reserved for scout marines. The first company is the veteran company, which is usually made up of terminators. However, certain space marine forces can be divided differently, like Black Templar Crusades being possibly thousands of marines strong, which I'll get to later, or a Death Watch kill team being 3 to 10 marines and essentially equivalent to a space marine squad, even though it's less than a squad. But the original and common organization structure is called a chapter. A chapter is derived from a founding legion in which there are a total of 18 original ones, but in the current scene and post-heresy there are 9 loyalist legions. Starting with the Dark Angels with Lionel Johnson, the White Scars from Jaga Tai Khan, the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ, the Imperial Fist with Rogel Dorn, the Blood Angels of Sanguinius, who are my personal favorites, the Iron Hands with Ferris Manus, the Ultramarines from Rabute Gilliman as previously mentioned, the Salamanders of Vulcan, and finally the Raven Guard with Corvus Corax. Through the Codex Astartes, these founding legions were divided into several successor chapters and given different names such as the Black Templars, Excoriators, and Crimson Fist, all of which who come from the Imperial Fist as Sons of Rogel Dorn. Speaking of the Black Templars, they are a good example of a Spaceborn chapter and a chapter which doesn't follow the Codex, since they have no capacity on their chapter and are estimated to be 6,000 Marines strong. The Templars draw from multiple worlds and do not have a fortress monastery on any given planet, unlike a fair majority of Space Marine chapters. Their chapter consists of multiple war fleets which constantly travel the void on their own crusades, going wherever they deem the Emperor's justice necessary. 
Space Marines may also have their own distinct sections of units, like the Blood Angels and their successor Death Companies, or the Space Wolves with Wolfen. These add some more strength than the Codex compliant numbers would normally allow. Chapters do not only contain standard Marines, but also... I am the instrument of his will. A standard Space Marine does not always complete the job. Surprisingly, for as much as an Astartes is a Swiss Army soldier, there are more specialized units belonging to the chapters. Can you tell us about some standard Space Marine units? Well, outside of the typical Battle Brothers, you've got Devastators. They're the people that are going to use, you know, your big minigun-esque kind of weapon or a rocket launcher. You know, somewhat Special Forces kind of area. You've got your Eliminators, which have really powerful weapons that are meant to basically focus a big monster or a big tank down. You have infiltrators, which are really fast, sneaky dudes, uh, despite the fact that they're about eight feet tall and, you know, can bench press me if they're pinky. Then you have your reavers, which are your violent skirmishers, skirmisher guys. They come up, they stab you, shoot you with a pistol, and run away at the same time. They, uh, they get the job done. So what can you tell us about Terminators of the Adeptus Astartes? Well, Terminators of the Adeptus Astartes are basically your premier shock infantry. They are equipped in the finest power armor that the Imperium of Man can make, and it is designed to not only deal out damage, but take as much damage as humanly possible. So what would you say that their base purpose or production is? Uh, their base purpose and their whole idea of their existence is going to be the biggest, baddest thing that the Space Marine can be, besides being at something crazy like a Dreadnought. Their whole purpose is either to get up close with uh, heavy weapons like Thunder Hammers and Lightning Claws and tear things apart in melee, or to carry around massive weapons and deal out damage like that, like assault cannons or plasma cannons. So, Trombley, can you tell us what a Dreadnought is? So a Dreadnought essentially is what happens when you have a critically injured Space Marine. They're a valiant part of the uh, you know company, so they don't want to let them go. So they're going to put them in a giant suit of armor that's essentially a life support system and a new robot body for them. And that's what, when we do that, that's called a Dreadnought. And what is the purpose of a Dreadnought, exactly? Purpose of a Dreadnought essentially is twofold. The first is to be, well, essentially what it is, a giant tank version of a Space Marine. Essentially, it's like having a ro robot AI, but the Empire doesn't like them. So you got that, you put it in a giant tank. The other purpose is uh, their living history. Uh, they keep their dreadnoughts alive because they've seen so much. They only wake them up every couple hundred years to fight. So they've got a living history of people who were there when they tell their big stories about their chapter history. 